The holodeck, as we've all seen in Star Trek, is quite a place to be. And so we challenged ourselves to create the modern version of the holodeck. And ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to show it to you today. This is, this is um, a, a virtual reality, shared environment, photorealistic, obeys the laws of physics, and allows us to basically create whatever we like. We imagine that one of these days, that one of these days, we'll actually go into the holodeck, design a product, design the factory that's going to make the product, and design the robots that's going to make the factory that's going to make the products. That future is upon us. And we'll take the blueprint right out of the holodeck and create basically a brand new factory. And what comes out of it are products that we've already simulated, we've already enjoyed, and we've already even simulated the manufacturing of. The holodeck is where future robots will be created. A holodeck is where we will raise and teach and allow these robots to learn. And so what we've done is this. We created what we call the Isaac Initiative. The Isaac Initiative. Isaac is named after someone very famous, Isaac Asimov, a futurist, someone who had thought about how robots would be created and its impact on society. So we called it the Isaac Initiative. It's a robotics platform. It has four components. The first component is, of course, the processor, the Jetson TX2. The second component is a software stack that allows it to perceive and localize and plan and take action. The third is a simulator we call Isaac's Lab. Isaac's Lab is basically a holodeck, but this lab is quite special and I'll show it to you. And then lastly, there are all kinds of robots that are gonna emerge. Some of the robots have hands. Some of the robots have wheels. Some of the robots have wings. Some of the robots have propellers. Some of the robots fly and some of the robots swim. We're going to have all kinds of robots. Isaac's lab works like this. It's a holodeck. And this lab has several characteristics. First, it's photorealistic. And the reason that it has to be photorealistic is because everything that Isaac or the robot sees has to look like in the future when it's not in this virtual environment. So it has to look photoreal, it has to look like the real thing. The second thing is it has to obey the laws of physics. If it doesn't obey the laws of physics, then the things that it learns in this holodeck will not be true when it comes into the real world. It has to obey the laws of physics. Water has to behave like water. Touching something has to behave like touching something. Something heavy would be something heavy. Gravity would be, would be uh, simulated. Okay, and so it has to have, has to obey the laws of physics. The third is it has to have artificial intelligence. The artificial intelligence will come into the Isaac lab in two ways. First way is through a virtual Jetson. The robot inside Isaac's lab will run the software stack that will run on Jetson exactly as it was, exactly as it is. And that software is basically the brain of the robot. And that brain of the robot will have an algorithm that is injected through the OpenAI gym. So reinforcement learning comes in through here. It runs on the virtual Jetson above. The robot definition, its arms, its physical characteristics, the actuators and the effectors, the cameras, all the sensors are all inputted using a standard robotics input format. The entire environment is designed. You can import the entire office, the entire city. You can import whatever you like to import into this, into this world that you would like the robot to grow up in. Okay? Whatever environment you would like the robot to grow up in, you can, you can import it into this environment. And all of this is running on our GPUs, and so it would be incredibly fast. Robot simulating environment, and what we've done here is we imported a little tiny hockey ring, something simple. The puck is simulated, the ice is simulated, the net is simulated. So this is Isaac learning. And notice in this virtual world, Isaac doesn't have to be just one robot. The way we do it is this. We replicate Isaac a whole bunch of times, and we let them all learn randomly. It's literally learning randomly. 
And once it starts randomly learning, it gets positive feedback every time it does something good. It gets ne negative feedback when it does something not as good. Okay? And so all of these robots are learning at the same time. We stop after a while, we take the smartest robot's brain, and we replicate it everywhere. And then we can continue. Of course, just hockey. We could, we could let Isaac learn almost anything. Um, we also, we also uh, let Isaac learn how to golf. In this particular environment, of course, the, the grass has to be simulated. The physics of the ball. Now, remember, we didn't show you the beginning of the simulation, but in the beginning, Isaac doesn't even know how to pick up the golf club. It doesn't even know which side of the golf club to use. But because it repeated it so many times, it eventually figured out that the best way to hold a golf club is with the putter on the bottom. Okay? A robot has basically three fundamental things. It has to have sensors. It has to reason. It has to have artificial intelligence. It has to understand what it sensed create a world model and reason about what to do. Artificial intelligence. And the third is apply motor skills. We now finally, for the very first time in computing history, have within our hands the three fundamental capabilities necessary for robotics to happen.